Second and eight from the 12 for Montana. They lead it 7-0. This is the start of the second quarter. Two tight ends are in the ball game. Kevin Claybo is in at H back. He is in motion. Brady Green is in the backfield. Swagger rolls out. He's looking for Ryan Bagley. Now he is going to run it. Swagger gets it down to about the nine yard line. That'll bring up third and five. You'll notice they rolled him to the left that time. Both times previous, he's been going to the right. But this time he decides to come up to the left side. I think he wanted to throw the ball here, but nothing opened up, so he just got a few yards out of it. Third and five from the nine. They need to get down to the four yard line. As we take a look at the play there, Jordan Sin on the tackle there for Portland State. A fine linebacker for the Vikings. Big play here, third and five. The ball is at the nine yard line. Brady Green in the backfield. Eric Allen and Ryan Bagley split out. Swagger's looking for the slant route to Bagley. It's not there, and he runs it, and Josh Swagger has a first down. What a nice weapon when your quarterback is tough enough and agile enough to do what Josh just did. They're saying a possible fumble. I don't know if the officials are going to call it that. If not, it's a first down. Now they're looking like they think it's a fumble. Oh, my goodness. We'll have to see the replay on this one, that it's Portland State football. Well, we'll get a good look at it right here. Yeah, we talked about Josh's hand. That left hand has got a cast on it. So he can't carry the ball as easily. That was a fumble, and it is Portland ball, so they did dodge a bullet. And that's just, I think, a function of that hand being casted. Oh, he did fumble the football right there. It was hard to tell in the live action, but our replay showed it clearly. It was a fumble, and Portland State, you're right, dodges a big bullet right there. With that said, now they have it first, first and 10 from the four. Boy, their starting field position has been terrible. There's a carry to the outside by Kalena Hookana. A real good play out there by Quentin Freeman and Lauren Utterback also coming up to play the run. Yeah, the Vikings again in that 22 personnel group. Two tight ends, two backs. Their fullbacks are very strong fullbacks, and they love to lead block with that halfback. Second and seven from the six, Portland State trying to get out of the shadow of the goalposts. Rob Freeman just one of five. He only threw for 50 yards last week, but he has two interceptions in this ball game already. There's a handoff right up the middle. A host of Grizzlies stop it at the nine yard line. So that's gonna bring up third and four. Twelve fifty to go here in the second quarter. Montana and Portland State a big conference showdown. Montana just about punched in another touchdown. They have a defensive touchdown from Tuff Harris. Portland State is one of four on third downs. Montana had a golden opportunity to go up 14 points in this game. Instead, it's Portland State football after the Josh Swagger fumble. There's a draw play by Portland State, and Kyle Ryan is having none of it. That's going to be well short of a first down, and it will be a punting situation for the Vikings. A nice call there, but Montana was not fooled by the draw. Uh, a lot of times you don't want to run the draw this deep on in field position, but it's a good call because it's third down. Defense is expecting pass. But Montana really does a nice job filling. Look at Kyle Ryan. You know, somebody different steps up for this defense every week. Last week it was Dustin DeLuey. Kyle Ryan is off to a great start tonight, and he's been kind of quiet the last few weeks. I know one thing, Tough Harris isn't going to fumble this one. You know he'll be handling this one with care. The Grizzlies almost blocked that one. Portland State will down it near midfield, a near block by the Grizzlies on special teams. We'll take a short timeout after a 37-yard punt. The Grizzlies will have great field position. Stay with us. We're back in Portland. Montana leads it seven to nothing in the second quarter on College Football Saturday from PGE Park. It's a baseball stadium, but we got plenty of football going on in here tonight. Reggie Bradshaw and Josh Swagger set up shop at midfield. There's a handoff, a counter play to Bradshaw, and Bradshaw is moving the pile near first down yardage again. 
Nice run that time. Just kind of picking his way over the right side. And anytime you can pop nine on your first down, that really helps your offense set things up. 11.06 to go here in the second quarter. Coming up on the Sinclair Oil Halftime Show, we'll send it back to Montana for a news update from Montana's news station. Plus, we'll take a look at the bookstore. First half highlights, that's coming up on the Sinclair Oil Halftime Show. Second and one from the 40. Eric Allen shifting. Now there's some confusion offensively for the Grizzlies, and Coach Houck will take a timeout. We'll take a short time out ourselves. You're watching College Football Saturday, the Grizzlies and Vikings. It's 7-0 Montana. Second and one for the Grizzlies. Second and one for the Grizzlies from the 41. Josh Swagger rolls out to his left. He's looking for Ryan Bagley. Bagley has it at the 15, and he's down to the 10-yard line. That's a first down and a big gainer for the Grizzlies. And give, give a Josh a lot of credit there because he had a little play action going, but the Portland State defense did not buy it at all, and they came with a lot of heat on him, and it's a little corner pattern here that Montana's running, and Josh does a super job to get this off and make the completion. That was a gain of 30 to Ryan Bagley. First and 10 from the 11, Reggie Bradshaw in the backfield. They give it to Reggie, he's looking for the corner. Jordan Sin is out there, and almost a late hit by Portland State as Sin runs him out of bounds. The Grizzlies will have it at the nine yard line. Well, you'll notice again, the stretch in the field, Jeremy, it's a steady diet of that tonight by Montana. And you just got to believe they, that's part of the plan. Although it looks like the Montana Grizzly is down. We'll check a number on that to see who it is. The trainers are out on the field. 10-19 to go here in the second quarter. We'll take this time to do our first half trivia brought to you by Don Adson Ford. Portland State defeated Delaware State 105 to zero in 1980. How many touchdown passes did Viking great Neil Lomax throw in that game? Six, eight, or ten? We'll give you a little chance to think about that a little bit. Neil Lomax played here. Also June Jones, who's currently the head coach at the University of Hawaii. James Hunden played here as well, who played many years for the Cincinnati Bengals in the NFL. They've won some Division II national championships here. And now they're in 1AA playing pretty good football under 14th year coach Tim Walsh. So we'll give you the answer right now. The answer is eight. Eight touchdown passes in a score of 105 to nothing. How about that? That's a lot of uh, offense in a football game right there. Eric Michael is the injured Grizzly. He is making his way gingerly off the field. Can't tell if it's a knee or an ankle, but he's in some pain. The good news is he's walking. He might be able to walk that off. Second and seven from the eight. They can get a first down inside the two yard line. They fake it to Brady Green. Swagger's back to throw. He's going for the back of the end zone and he just throws it out of bounds. And that wasn't a bad play because there was nothing there. He has another bootleg, almost a double uh, counter that time where they fake it a little bit too much. The defense was fooled up front, but good coverage in the end zone. Third and seven. The ball is on the eight yard line as we take one more look at it. A real nice play out there on the pressure by Portland State's defense. Cole Smith, the defensive end. It's third and seven. The ball is on the eight yard line for the Grizzlies. Trying to make it 14 to nothing. Josh Swagger's looking for the fade route and it is a touchdown to Ryan Bagley. Touchdown, Montana. Excellent execution on the fade. Bagley played it perfectly and so did Josh. He throws it up in the corner. Let the receiver make the play when he feels ready to go up and get it. The defender's having a hard time seeing the ball. That gives the advantage to the offense. We saw that play against South Dakota State and it worked beautifully again here. Swagger knows how to throw that fade route. He and Bagley have some good chemistry on that play. 10.08 to go as Dan Carpenter looks to make it a two touchdown lead 
for the Grizzlies, and he does. The extra point is good. Five plays for 49 yards. We'll talk more about that fantastic drive by the Grizzlies after this short timeout. Welcome back to Portland. The Grizzlies have taken a 14-0 lead. They have a defensive touchdown on an interception by Tuff Harris, and now a touchdown pass from Josh Swagger to Ryan Bagley, and it is 14-0. The Grizzlies looking every bit of the Big Sky Conference favorite so far. Yeah, they really look great, and the score could be a lot bigger than it is right now for Montana. There's a short kick by Carpenter. Kenneth Mackins takes it at the 12, and what a fantastic play on the special teams for the Grizzlies. And Number the, 19, Colt Anderson, the leading tackler. That's really the, what Montana, that speed is just so amazing. There was some extracurricular in the middle of the field. Bobby talked about this in his quarterback club meetings this week, uh, where he said, you know, we just got to watch the extracurricular. Portland State kind of prides itself in getting a little extra aggressive, especially on kickoffs, and that happened that time. Officials uh, showed some patience by not throwing a flag. Ten minutes to go here in the second quarter. Montana gets their defense out on the field, and they have played great so far. Kyle Ryan is off to a great start in this game, and the defensive front is doing a great job on that really good veteran offensive line for Portland State. Yeah, and Montana just has so many good athletes, and, and what's impressive is how they close to the ball so quick and how many people are at the point of attack and on the tackle. Olani Shabomahim in in the backfield, but Freeman is looking to throw, and it's batted up in the air again. Dangerously hits the turf, and the Grizzlies almost had an interception one more time. How about that? I think Portland State is throwing the ball more than Coach Houck expected. But again, it's a young quarterback, kind of untested, and Montana's defense is really letting him have it. He has been hit repeatedly so far and early in the game. Croy Bierman getting the pressure there. He's off to a great start this season. Mike Murphy and Croy Bierman in at the defensive end slots, and they are just hammering Portland State right now. There's Shalani Shabomaheen, and he has the corner, and there is a good form tackle out on the edge right there by Jimmy Wilson. Well, that time, Portland State's front really got in charge of that play. They did a great job. The push was amazing. And Montana lucky to close this down before it went for even more. Olani Shabomahin, a gain of 10. A real good tackle out there by Jimmy Wilson. That's how they teach you. Get low and don't let him get by you. <laughs> low man wins. First and 10, the ball is at the 23 for Portland State. There's a give straight ahead to Alani Shabomahin. Kerry Mullen blows that up along with Sean Lebsock. A lot of hitting going on. You can hear it all the way up here, just a ton of uh, pressure and strength on that line. Now Alani Shabomahin is listed at number two at tailback right now because Muammar Ali is not yet ready to go. Olani Shabomahin is a very talented running back. He's a transfer from Oregon State. He's from right here in Portland, Cleveland High School. Second and eight from the 25 for Portland State. Shabomahin gets the carry. And it's a counter play. And boy, Jimmy Wilson saved big yardage right there. A real nice tackle by Jimmy. A late flag coming in all the way from the back judge uh, holding on uh, Portland State. So this is going to really hurt Portland State. So it was second and eight on the 25. Now we'll replay second down and back them up. Jeremy, just to give the viewers a sense of the size of the offensive front here at Portland, the uh, left tackle is 6'5", 320. The left guard is 6'1", 310. The center is 6'2", 3 and a quarter. The uh, right guard, 6'3", 290, and the right tackle, 6'5", 300. I mean, that's NFL size. These guys are huge. There you see Tim Walsh. He's in his 14th season. He's 86 and 65. There you see the numbers from Olani Shabomahin. Five carries, 24 yards. He's averaging 4.9 yards a pop, but after the penalty, it is second and 18 for Portland State. Rob Freeman in at quarterback, and he is back to throw. 
some pretty good pressure one more time, and Matt Lebsock almost intercepts it. Boy, they're throwing more than they thought, the, the, more than the, uh, we thought they were going to, but they might rethink that a little bit now. It's not looking so good. It'll be fun to see Matt's eyes on this. Matt had to have his eyes popping out of his head because he wanted six on this if he'd have got his hands on it. I had a chance to work at camp with him this summer and his brother, and boy, they were fun. They did a great job coaching kids, and it's great to see him doing so well this year. Brian White, the transfer from Colorado, is warming up on the sidelines as Freeman tucks it and runs, and a great play from behind by the Montana Grizzlies. That is Croy Bierman. And Brian White, he became eligible on Monday, enrolled in classes. He played in Colorado's bowl game last year, and he is warming up. He's only been here a week, and he might get in this ball game. How about that? Well, the Vikings need to do something because Montana is just really starting to dominate on the defensive side. Tough Harris set to return the punt by Portland State. As you see, Croy Bierman, some great speed out of his defensive end slot. He's so strong and fast this year, and he has really improved athletically from last year thanks to Mike Gerber, the new strength coach for the Montana Grizzlies. And the punt goes out of the back of the end zone. It's kicked out of the back of the end zone. And Portland State having trouble on the snaps on their special teams, and that is a safety. Yeah, and good coaching. You can tell that's been coached, and that's exactly what you tell your punter. But you know, Jeremy, that was the third bad snap on punt. You do tell your punter if you're in the end zone, you can't get it. Either throw it, run it, or kick it out of the back of the end zone. We'll take the two and then kick off. But boy, Montana starting to dominate. This could get ugly if uh, Portland doesn't find an answer soon. 7.25 to go here in the second quarter. After the safety here, as you take one more look at it, the punter just boots it out of the back of the end zone. That's good coaching. Brandon Fisher was closing in on it. You know, a lot of people say, why would you do that? But that's exactly what you want to do. Because it, otherwise you risk a touchdown for the defense if they recover. So now uh, Portland State will give the ball back to Montana. Montana gets the football after this. So And you see some smiles on that Grizzly sideline. They're having some fun now. And uh, like I said, Portland State needs to find an answer or they're going to they're going to be in trouble real soon. Yeah, I'd say they're in trouble right now. <laughs> Brian White is warming up on the sidelines. Well, you know, what was amazing last week in Missoula to watch the Grizzlies. Uh, in, we watched them for a long time, but last week you kind of just shuddered how good they were on their field. Uh, just so many athletes, especially on the defense and, and for that matter, on the offense. They scored 59 points. So it's the kick return team in for Montana. That's Quentin Jackson and Rob Schulte. Schulte, a real fine kick returner for the Grizzlies. He averages 23 and a half yards a kick return. The kid out of Great Falls High School is a fantastic runner with the football. He really is. He's got a lot of speed. You know, some teams kick off here, some punt. The reason you'd punt is the hang time generally. It allows your defense to get down and cover because the ball tends to be higher. The Grizzlies are playing short. Schulte is under it at the 21, and he drops the football. Schulte has fumbled some kicks before. He puts a nice spin move on, however. Portland State buries him at the 25, and Coach Houck, Mr. Special Teams, is not going to be happy with two fumbled returns so far as, boy, there's some extracurricular activity out there. It's getting intense. Well, that's what Bobby talked about this week. We're not going to let Portland, at the end of a kick, a punter kick, you know, have their way with our guy on the ground. And, and you notice Montana's linemen rally there to make sure everybody got up clean. Brandon Brooks for Portland State lost his helmet. Josh Swagger back in the ball game. It's 7-13 left here in the second quarter. The Grizzlies have a 16-0 lead and they have the football there. You see Brian White on the sidelines. He's the transfer from the University of Colorado and it looks like he will be entering this ball game if and when Portland State gets the football back. There's a direct handoff to Brady Green, and he is stopped by C.J. Nusalu, the transfer from UCLA. I'd say White's uh, body type looks a lot like Josh, so we'll have two similar quarterbacks if he does enter the game. Montana wants to run the ball here a little bit, Jeremy, and get some time off the clock. 
6.38 to go, 16 nothing. Second and 10 from the 26 yard line. You see Josh Swagger. Rob Schulte is in motion. Swagger back to throw. He's going across the middle and it's nearly picked off by DJ Robinson, underthrown by Swagger. Yeah, DJ did a nice job getting into his drop and that's what you want your linebackers to do on pass. You got to drop and get into your zone and he did a good job. Almost had himself an interception. Oh, and he wishes he would have. There you see downtown Portland, Oregon. It's been a fun trip for the Montana Grizzlies so far. They lead this one 16 to nothing. And Portland's a real nice city. Uh, got to tour the Nike facilities today. And Nike's such a big uh, outfit here in Portland. Uh, Phil Knight has really developed uh, quite the quite the monopoly here as far as uh, the Nike Corporation goes and got to tour today. It's an impressive facility, no question. Yeah, Portland's a beautiful area. We notice building uh, everywhere, even the Tigard and the surrounding areas have just grown at a rapid pace. You kind of hope they can keep their charm for such an elegant city, and it is gorgeous here. The Grizzlies usually stay downtown, but they stayed in Tigard this time because it's a lot further from downtown, and officials with the university felt like the team would be more comfortable out there, not as many distractions downtown, and it's certainly working to their advantage so far. Third and 10 from the 26. After a timeout, we'll see what the Grizzlies come out with. Swagger rolling to his left, and he throws it out of bounds. It's intended for Mike Ferreter. Dan Carpenter will come out to punt it away for the Grizzlies. Well, that was a good series for Portland. We mentioned they better find the answer, or it's going to be a long night. Of course, for the UM, they wanted to sustain a drive again, but Portland uh, able to get three and out here, so they got to be happy with that. Now we'll see if their offense can get anything going. As I mentioned, Dan Carpenter in for the injured Tyson Johnson, and Carpenter leads the Big Sky Conference in punting average. He's just been a great find for the Grizzlies. He punted some last year as well, and this is going to work in the Grizzlies' favor as it bounces in front of Brendan Farino. Farino, the fine punt returner and wide receiver for Portland State, he finds the edge and brings it out to about the 28-yard line. He's tackled there by Croy Bierman. Yeah, Portland State had a wall going here. They're setting up their wall coverage or return coverage. Montana recognized it on the way down. Of course, you practice that and you try to cut off the wall, and it worked a little bit for Portland State, but Montana did recognize it. We'll see who runs out here at quarterback now for Portland State. Is it going to be Brian White the transfer? Well, they're going to call a procedure penalty here. I think of Montana. This may be a re-kick. Yep, it's going to be. Well, I'm looking at Coach uh, Hauk, and he is uh, not happy with the officials. Well, they're calling uh, illegal formation, so they're going to have to re-punt. Re Probably had... Not enough men on the line of scrimmage or too many, but anyway, they're going to come back and re-kick. Brendan Farino is a good wide receiver for Portland State. He's also their punt returner. He's had a tough year as a punt returner, only averaging 7.6 yards a return, but he's going to get another crack at this one, and the last one was a pretty nice effort by number 83, you see there. Brendan Farino for Portland State. You know, while we have a sec here, I want to congratulate Carroll College on a win today. Jeremy, uh, I believe it was their homecoming. They had a 16-8 win over Tech. So congratulations to Mike Van Dees and Jimmy Hogan uh, for their win in the Saints. So Dan Carpenter will kick it away again. It's a perfect snap. Portland State almost blocked it. They may have got a hand on it. Farino has it. And that's a real nice hit by Jimmy Wilson and Van Cooper. They tag team on it, a 38-yard punt by Dan Carpenter. Excellent coverage at Hustle down the field, but you were right. That ball was as close to being blocked as it could be without being blocked. It was extremely close. Well, Brian White is an interesting story. He played at Colorado last year. They lose their head coach, Gary Barnett. They bring in Dan Hawkins. In spring ball, Brian White was the starter for the Colorado Buffaloes. And then at some point during the summer, Dan Hawkins decided to go in a different direction. Brian White transfers to Portland State, becomes eligible Monday, and here he is, Brian White. His first snap as a Portland State Viking. 
He was a very talented quarterback in high school, and you can see his arm strength right there. How about that play by Tuff Harris, though? They're going for Tremaine Kirkland, the transfer from UNLV on the deep ball there. And isn't it interesting what they do on his first play? They go deep on a post pattern, but perfect defense by Tuff. Perfect. Well, that's great coverage. Tremaine Kirkland was a preseason All-Mountain West pick at University of Nevada, Las Vegas. He played there four years, only played two years, redshirted one year, took a medical redshirt another year, and is now at Portland State. Tremaine Kirkland threw a touchdown pass against California earlier this season for Portland State. Brian White in a quarterback, Kalena Hookana out of the eye. They give it to Hookana. And he is caught from behind by Mike Murphy, but it's a first down carry for Portland State. There's a, their favorite plays. Again, just bring it underneath that line and let that 300 plus pounds, you can see him, Bobby called them girders. They just kind of get in there and move people and you can see why, road, road girders. I'm sure at some point, Tim Walsh had a heart to heart meeting with his offensive line on the sidelines because about the first three or four series of this game, Montana was dominating the line of scrimmage from the defensive line slot. And at this point, Portland State has regrouped a little bit and they're making some plays now. We're at the five minute mark of the second quarter. It's first and 10 for Portland State. There is a handoff to Hookano and Lauren Utterback stretched it out enough and Hookano had to cut it up and he slipped and fell. The clock continues to run, 4.41 left here in the first half at PGE Park in Portland. Montana dominating Portland State at the present time, 16 to nothing, a tough Harris interception return, a touchdown pass from Swagger to Bagley, and then a bad snap on a punt results in a safety for Portland State. It's second and 10 from the 48 for Brian White. His first series with Portland State, and Mike Murphy is coming after him, and Murphy belts him. They're going deep to Kirkland, and another nice play out there by Quinton Jackson, and Mike Murphy belted Brian White in the backfield. Well, you know what? He did it. He, again, this is coaching. Watch this. He comes across. He puts a lick on him, but he brings his arms up. You can't see it in this play. And another defensive perfectly played ball here at the end, by the way, to tap it away. That's great. But anyway, Murphy comes up, brings his hands up, and uh, that's why the official didn't call a flag there, Jeremy. Portland State is one of six on third down. Third down efficiency, not very good for the Vikings at this point. Four, 10 to go here in the second quarter. Kalena Hookana in the backfield out of the power eye situation. Brian White back to throw. They're double teaming Mike Murphy. Now the defensive tackles get in and make a play. A real nice play right there by Jesse Carlson out of Billings. I think there's gonna be a hold here, I think, on uh, Portland State. There is a flag down. And I'm surprised they're not calling that unnecessary roughness personal foul too, because at the end of this play, the tackle, number 71, not only holds, which they called him for, but watch here at the end if you can, they're gonna, he pushes the defender down. And you know, if I'm on the field officiating, there's a flag, another one for personal foul. How about Mike Murphy? He got off to a slow start this year, then has the emergency appendectomy, does not play last week, and now he is out there and just dominating right now, and that is why he is a Buck Buchanan watch list player, because he is that good when he is on his game. He appears to be back on his game. Portland State to punt. Tough Harris has his heels at the 10. He's gonna let it go over his head, and we'll see if it creeps in the end zone. No, it does not. Good coverage by Portland State, and they're going to mark it at the six-yard line. Yeah, excellent play by the Portland special teams here. Again, shows some good coaching. They hustle down. They don't bite on the fair catch and fake on that. They go to the ball and keep it in bounds. Good job. That was a 39-yard punt by Portland State, but it backs the Grizzlies up in the shadow of their goalpost. We'll see what they do offensively here. Maybe go conservative with the field position situation as it is. Reggie Bradshaw in the backfield, Josh Swagger. There's a handoff to Bradshaw. Bradshaw has the corner and he is hammered out of bounds. That is Adam Hayward out there. 
Also uh, Jordan Sin and DJ Johnson out there. Nice run for Montana. Little stretch play here, zone outside. Uh, just get what you can, let the lineman find a block and make it. And then he stretches it for nine. Boy, as I mentioned earlier, when you get nine on first down, your offense has really helped. The playbook opens wide up. Second and one for the Grizzlies. A big run right there to get out of the shadow of the goalposts. Reggie Bradshaw in the backfield for the Grizzlies. A long count from Josh Swagger. They snap it and they go same play other side. C.J. Niusalu tracks Bradshaw down from the back side. And that was second and one, so they'll give him a first down on that one. Yeah, Montana would like nothing more here to run the clock and drive the field. And of course, that would really give them confidence at halftime. Reggie Bradshaw ran right out of his shoes there. Again, we talked about this is a tough handoff. You can see it there that Josh is actually making that handoff with his off hand, <laughs> his inside hand, and that's tough that you don't get a fumble, but he's executing it pretty well. First and 10 and two shoes to go for the Grizzlies. They picked up the shoes. Bradshaw goes and regroups. Brady Green is in the backfield. There's a delayed handoff to Brady Green. He fights his way for about one. That'll bring up second and nine. There's 2.49 to go here in the first half. Big blitz that time by Portland State. They did not bite on the bootleg and everybody just piled on Brady that time. We'll give him no gain on that one actually. Second and 10, the ball on the 18 yard line. And as they are working on Reggie Bradshaw's shoes, I think he's that fast. He just ran out of his shoes. <laughs> Several players have done that tonight. It's been about the third or fourth time we've seen that on the field. Uh, this turf is not the best. It'll take shoes and everything else and spit it out. It's not the best surface in the world. That is for sure. Swagger back to throw. He runs out of time now and he's looking for Ryan Bagley and Bagley pounds the line judge over there as Coach Houck Helps up the the yard crew over there. My goodness, watch out. Josh sure had a lot of time. There must have been great coverage downfield. Yeah, and again, he shows some maturity by not forcing the ball upfield and in interception, especially at this point in the field. But he just kind of tucks it and uh, tries to force it in out, out of bounds. The Grizzlies have not been very efficient on third down. It's third and 10. They are one of five on third downs. They've been very efficient throughout the course of the season. As you see the yardstick crew over there taking a beating. Third and 10, the ball is on the 18. Swagger's getting some pressure and Swagger is going to be sacked by the Portland State defense. That's a real nice play by Matisse Gehring. Yeah, another linebacker blitz. They're bringing people from all over the place, and Montana's had some trouble picking that up from time to time, although often doing a good job. This time they sneak in and make a big play. Matisse Gehring is a defensive tackle out of Lake Oswego, Oregon, in the Portland area here, and he uh, transferred from Oregon State. You see Coach Houck meeting with his defense right here, talking to Mike Murphy, Dan Carpenter. Well, this has been a great first half for Montana. I mean, to summarize with 1.52 to go here, the Grizzlies come in. This is a big game. Everyone's expecting just a slug fest, and they have shut out Portland State in the first half here. Yeah, they really are a good team. Uh, Portland is, is actually fortunate to have it this close. So if you're uh, Coach Walsh going in at halftime, you're going to talk to your team and say, look, we're in this. All we need to do is get some breaks. We've got a new quarterback. Everybody settle down. We get a touchdown, and this is a ball game. Of course, if you coach Hauk, you're going in and you're saying, hey, this could be 32 to nothing. We had some turnaways that we maybe didn't need to have, but let's get out and get her done. So both sides will work that at halftime, and it's still a definitely good ball game. Coming up on the Sinclair Oil Halftime Show, we'll send it back to Montana for a news update for Montana's news station. Plus, we'll take a look at the bookstore, first half highlights and stats. That's all coming up on the Sinclair Oil Halftime Show. Dan Carpenter into punt. Portland State is setting up a return. Brendan Ferrigno takes it at midfield, and Jimmy Wilson and Van Cooper absolutely eat him alive at midfield. Yeah, it's hard to get a return going when uh, the coverage is so strong and so quick. Nice job by the Grizzlies. 
you know what, they're in pretty good position right here. Uh, 150 to go in the first half after a 37-yard punt. They have uh, the football at midfield, Portland State does, and they need some points here. Look at the field position starts for Portland State. My goodness. Yeah, this is probably the best start they've had of the game right here at midfield. The Grizzlies looking to keep that shutout intact here before we hit halftime. Brian White in the ball game. He's looking to the outside. He's looking for Tremaine Kirkland, and Kirkland has it at the 35-yard line, the transfer from Nevada, Las Vegas. Well, he did a nice job on that throw. We talked about his body type being similar to Josh. He's tall and long, and he threw a perfect pass that time, similar to what Josh throws on the corner. Well, it's clear that Brian White has a better arm than Freeman, and uh, I think we might be seeing uh, the emergence of Brian White as the starting quarterback here in Portland. First and 10, the ball is at the 35-yard line. 1.32 to go here in the first half. White is back to throw. He's looking deep across the middle for Kirkland, and Kirkland has a Portland State touchdown. Yeah, Montana brought the house that time, and uh, Jimmy Wilson, I think, got burned a little bit on a perfect ball. There's what a new quarterback will do for you. We talked about what's going to be said at halftime. This changes things a little bit. No question. The arm of Brian White has made this game very interesting. Two transfers right there, and they hook up for a 35-yard touchdown. You know, and, and the, the defense was a little bit behind that. It wouldn't have mattered. That was a perfect pass. It, even if he'd have been right on him, I think he'd have caught it. The extra point by Eric Azor is good. Brian White to Tremaine Kirkland with 1.27 to go in the first half. And Portland State's back in the ball game at 16 to 7. Yeah, when you get that kind of ball as a receiver, you just smile because you know you've got it probably about halfway there. Well, Freeman came out and struggled tonight, and uh, he didn't play well last week at Weber State. Rob Freeman is out of the ball game. Brian White's in, and White shows off some arm strength and why he was recruited to the University of Colorado. And it was interesting, Montana brought a big blitz package that time. Both inside backers came hard, and uh, the edge people came too, and he, nobody could get to him. There's a look at our MontanaGrizzlies.com scoring drive for all the latest information and statistics. Log on to MontanaGrizzlies.com. Two plays, 52 yards. They get the home run ball to Tremaine Kirkland. Brian White is originally out of Mission Viejo, California. He is a junior eligibility-wise. And the Grizzlies take the kick. That's Quentin Jackson. Jackson lost his shoe as well. Shoes are flying down on the turf. Jackson will pick up his shoes and the Grizzlies will have the ball at the 28. He made a real nice cut upfield right at the end of that play. He saw a seam. He was going into the middle and then watch him here as he makes his cut. He picks up an extra 10 yards off his cut right there. Cuts up inside and picks up 10 more. I think Portland State's trying to pull the Grizzlies shoes off. My goodness. 1.15 to go. Josh Swagger has the out route to Rob Schulte. Schulte gets out of bounds, and he's out of bounds at the 44-yard line. Nice play right there. They save some time. 1.10 to go in the half. Well, that time Portland State was fooled on the outside. The coverage was off the receiver. Uh, the defender went inside on a different route, and he was wide open. 18-yard gain to the former Great Falls High Bison star, Rob Schulte. Josh Swagger, 6 of 13, 99 yards. He has a touchdown and a pick. The ball's at the 44-yard line. Brady Green does a nice job of picking up a blitz, and Swagger is able to complete the ball out to the 45-yard line across midfield, and they get out of bounds, so 104 to go. They're managing the clock very well. Well, and you got to love how Bobby's attacking here. He is not sitting back running out the clock to go in at halftime. They are attacking, and they're at full speed ahead. They want to score, it appears, here and not run out the clock. 104 to go. Josh Schwager and the Grizzlies have the ball at the 44-yard line. Brady Green and Josh Swagger in the backfield. Now Swagger in some trouble. Swagger takes a big hit. 
And Coach Houck's going to take a timeout to stop the clock with 55 seconds to go, and I believe that's their final timeout. And again, uh, that shows they want some points out of this. Josh uh, is a good rollout or bootleg quarterback when he wants to. He's not the best scrambler up inside here. And you can see they contain him. He tries to get something, but not a lot there. Well, that was a good play by the Portland State defense there. Jonathan Benjamin Nichols. Swagger fumbled on a play just like that down inside the 10 yard line when the Grizzlies were looking to punch it in. You see they have no timeout left, but Josh has had to tuck it and run a lot tonight. That means the coverage downfield is good and the two corners are very good. Dominic Dixon and Odell Jackson. Yeah, and I think that cast again we, we talked about caused that fumble but he is a good rollout quarterback if you start him right off the get go and get him outside on the corner but when he has to scramble up into the pocket it's tougher for him. 55 seconds to go. The Grizzlies are out of timeouts. They lead it 16 to 7. They're looking for some points. A lot of Grizzly fans in the crowd tonight. The crowd is below us here, so hard to tell uh, how many people are actually here. It looks like a decent crowd. They've not been drawing well here at Portland State. But of course, they draw well when the Grizzlies are in town. Josh Swagger back to throw. He steps up into the pocket, has Schulte across the middle, and it's complete at the 17-yard line. And there's a good indication of how many Grizzly fans are here. You can hear them all cheering. <laughs> yeah, what a beautiful throw. A couple receivers open. He had an underneath route open, and this one was open too, and he threads the needle. Nice job. Good route by Schulte. 28-yard gain from Swagger to Schulte. And they hurry it up here. The clock stopped with the first down. Swagger gets it to the outside to Mike Ferreter. He's out of bounds at the seven yard line. Is this great clock management or what? Yeah, the Grizzlies are doing a super job here. They've taken the ball the length of the field in short order and done a very nice execution uh, here in short yardage or a short time. Officials time out. I think they want to measure. Swagger goes to the sidelines to talk to his coaches. You know, new this year, Jeremy, they, you notice it on this play, they've actually positioned the chains off the sideline, so now they have to come in and measure because it's not right on top. Looks like he's got the first down. Yeah, I thought he had it originally. I don't know why they had to measure it, but just want to make sure, I guess, it's a critical situation here uh, with uh, 39 seconds left here in the half. There you see our head official, Bruce Palmer. The Grizzlies have it first and goal at the seven. First and goal at the seven for Montana. Josh Schwager's getting some pressure. He's looking for the corner of the end zone to Craig Chambers, and the pass is incomplete. And DJ Robinson belts Josh Schwager back at the 23. Yeah, DJ stepped up from outside. He did an outside blitz that time. They brought a lot of heat again. Uh, it was interesting to see if they're going to throw a flag. Let's see how much time is away from the ball here. You get a step and a half. That was pretty close. Second and goal from the seven here with 34 seconds to go. The Grizzlies have a couple more shots into the end zone here with no timeouts left. Three wideouts at the top of your screen. Josh Swagger again has to roll out. And it is intercepted by Dominic Dixon. Dominic Dixon, the fantastic defensive back out of Seattle, Washington, O'Day High School. And that is another big play by Portland State. Well, that might have been the first big mistake I've seen Josh make tonight and maybe in two weeks. He rolled out here and everybody's got pretty good coverage. He probably should have thrown it out the back of the end zone, but he tries to force it in, which because he's such a great competitor, but the coverage is definitely there. You know, give him credit for trying, but I bet he wishes he'd have that one back. Well, Josh is a, a pure pocket passer. When he has to roll out, that is not his best uh, game. He doesn't like to roll out. He likes to stay in the pocket. Well, as I mentioned, if you roll him early, he's real efficient. But if he has to flush, it's tougher on him. But again, he just he just missed through that. He I'm sure wishes he had it back. Well, the bad thing about that half is the Grizzlies did not put away Portland State. The Vikings are hanging around. They have some life thanks to Brian White. The good thing is Montana leads 16 to 7 here 
at halftime and as I, the Grizzlies head for the locker room. And I think as we try to get Bobby Houck's comments, you got to give Coach Houck a lot of credit there, Jeremy. He didn't sit on that lead and run the clock. He, he tried to score, and while they didn't get the touchdown, it's still they did a great job bringing it down the field. Well, Coach Houck saw some good things and some bad things in that first half. And he is standing by down on the field with the third member of our team, Dave Guffey. Let's go down to Guff. Tiger Grizz head coach Bobby out. Bobby, the turnover game has hurt you, and yet your defense played great, gave up that last second touchdown. you got to finish in the red zone. Yeah, two things that are disappointing are the turnovers and then giving up that ball. We, we pressured him, we didn't get there, and we got beat on the post. And I, don't, I think one of the keys also get more pressure to Brian White now, the Colorado quarterback, now in for the Vikings. Yeah, we need to get after him. We, we've had good pressure on the quarterback. We just didn't get there on that play. So I, we, we need to continue to get home, continue to play good defense. If they don't score again, we win. Best of luck in the second half, Coach. Thank you. Back upstairs. Thanks a lot, Guff. Stay tuned for the Sinclair Oil Halftime Show. We'll send it back to Montana for a news update from Montana's news station. Stay with us. It's 16-7 Grizzlies.